in the previous video, we ended up pretty much getting our lobby system at a near completish state. So, you know, you can see when people join, leave, uh, the chat, and all that kind of stuff. And same thing whenever the host decides to change the map, it trickles down to all the other connected clients so they can see it. But currently, we don't really have a way to find lobbies or advertise our own lobby or anything like that. Now, in the previous videos and another series, I've showed how to use the online subsystem, both just null and Steam. So that way you can advertise your server through Steam and all that kind of stuff and connect and play with each other that way. But in this tutorial series, I want to kind of avoid using the online subsystem as a whole, and we're going to be writing and creating our own system pretty much from scratch. So we're going to be creating our own master server. That's going to be where we send a post request with our server info, such as like our server name, the map that it's on, all that kind of stuff. We're going to send it to the master server. Master server is going to then, well, using our web API, and that's going to add it to a database. And it's going to pretty much just create an entry with all the information we need. And then whenever somebody clicks on find servers, we're going to access the web API with a get request. We're going to get all of the servers from the database and send them back to us. And from there, we can iterate through each one of them and pretty much just fill our lobby with it. I mean, our uh, server browser with it. So that'll avoid us from having to use this connect button which I may keep just for uh, the sake of keeping a fast connection so we can easily join and stuff for our own servers. I mean, our own lobby. So we can first get started. First thing we're gonna do is create the web API. So I'm gonna go over here, open up Visual Studio 2019. I'm gonna go to create a new project. I'm gonna change languages to C Sharp. Set it back to all platforms and all project types. Now, if we look down, just scroll. Actually, we can search search for ASP. You will see ASP.NET web application. So we're going to click that next, and I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it world at war master server and i'm going to change the path a bit i made a folder for it and i'm just going to throw it in here then once you're good to go just press create and you'll be met with this now there's a couple of different options that we can choose but the one that we really want to focus on is web api because that's really all we need we're not having any sort of interface or anything like that for the user to use so just select Web API, leave everything else as default, and hit Create. And this should create your project. And then I will go about kind of how we will uh, be sending information to it for testing. And how we're going to actually be sending it in Unreal Engine. So once the project's built, it should be met with this screen. And if you come over here under Controllers, and click on the values controller.cs. This is what we're going to be kind of creating ourselves. But currently, you can see right here, let me go ahead and run it with control F5, and it should launch up Google Chrome. So if we look at it, this is the API here. So the get request would be API slash forward slash values, and that would return this array of strings printing out value one and value two. So if I do that, just copy API forward slash values and put it in like so, press enter, we see value one, value two. Now, there's a handy tool called Postman, which will be linked in the description, and that's going to allow us to test with it very easily. So when I was referring to actually hosting a server and sending the server information to the um, web API, this is an example of what we would be sending. So we would be passing in, well, server ID by default would be zero because I want to have our web API generate a server ID automatically, or we might have one be associated with our actual 
uh, profile name instead. We want to send the IP address so that way connecting clients know where they can connect to. You can have the server name, the current amount of players that are connected, and the map we are playing on. And we would send this, this is in JSON format, to the server. The server would then add all this to our database. Then when we read from it, it would pretty much be returning objects or JSON objects like this that we can parse through. So to give you an example, of uh, what it's actually going to look like because this doesn't return all this fancy crap. I want to copy the URL, change this to a get request, and for the URL I'm going to input what we actually have to send. And when we send, we will see we have a JSON array containing value 1 and value 2. So if we go and get something specific, I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, well, I'll leave it up. You see for this get request it has an ID so this could be something specific so if we know the server ID we can use it to access the information for that server so for example just any value it's API forward slash values forward slash any number so over the ID so I just do forward slash one press send you can see it returns value just like so right here so that's kind of what controllers are and posts are pretty much as they, well, delete, obviously, as it says. But post requests are pretty much what we're going to be sending or calling to send data to the database to, for storage. That way we can read from it. Get requests are what we're going to use to receive it. So for testing purposes for a while, we're going to be using Postman to make sure, one, we can send all the data that we need to the server for it to be stored. Two, that we can receive it. Once we get that all set up and good to go, we will move on to using all of that inside of Unreal Engine via HTTP requests. So now that we have our basic web API set up and ready to go, we can actually start. Well, we'll probably actually set it up to, eh, I don't know, we might configure it, start configuring it first, and then we'll probably end up working on setting up a database and linking it to it. So we'll either do one of those in the next video. So I will see you then.